How are you doing today, sir? Uh, very, very well. All the better for seeing you. How are you doing? Uh, listen, I'm doing great. I um, If I look down, it's because, you know, I'm looking at some stuff that I may have prepared, you know, questions with you, Will. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So first, let me start by saying congrats on the movie. So I like throwing some curveballs right at the beginning to ask about some, you know what I mean? I just don't want to spend, you know. So I read that you are the executive producer on Next Goal Wins. How did that come about? Um, well, uh, well, that, that was a script that we developed and, um, and then we reached out to, uh, that's at the Imaginarium, our production company. Uh, so yeah, so we, we reached out to Taika and, uh, we're very, very excited that he wanted to, to direct it. And, uh, and lo and behold, you know, he came and we shot the movie and it, it's turning out great. It's looking um, fantastic. Do you think it's so different than what Taika has done before? Um, are you, uh, what can you tease people about it? Um, I, I just think it's one of the most, it's one of the most incredible football stories of all time. It really is. It's such a beautiful tale and a very, it's, it's an, it, you know, it, and anybody who, who likes football will love this movie, soccer particularly, not American football, but, uh, you know, and, but it's just such a, it's a really heartfelt story about a community that that comes together because they love doing what they they, they do and 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 the, and the kind of the it, it, it's about about being forced in a direction to achieve that doesn't suit or kind of mean anything to them other than the enjoyment of, of the game that they love playing being pushed into a thing however you know they, they go through trials and tribulations and 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 they come out on top and in, 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 in a nutshell really I suppose You've worked with such talented directors, and I'm curious, what have you cribbed from them while on set that you wanted to take with you when you get behind the camera? Well, obviously, the, you know, the person I've, I've worked mostly with is, is Peter Jackson. It goes without saying, I le I've learned an enormous amount from him because he's given me great opportunities to learn from him, um, you know, offering me such things as the second unit directorship of, 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 of during The Hobbit. And, but but what, what really sticks out to me about Peter as a director is this incredible ability to trust his his team and to and to lead in, a, in such a way that, that that enables everyone to give 150 percent and and kind of and, and make that he makes everybody feel incredibly valued for for, for what they do and and and, and cr yeah creates an atmosphere of of, um, of of constantly challenging um kind of like a cauldron of creativity that, that keeps swirling around and uh, uh, but all the time sort of being forensic and detailed a big about the outcome and exactly what he wants but just allowing the best idea in the room to to rise to the surface i think yeah i've heard that about spielberg that one of the reasons he's so good is he listens to everybody on set for ideas I think that's I think that's true. I think it's a mark. It is the mark of a great director. And, you know, when you're a, a aspiring or kind of a young director, I think you somehow feel you've got to control everything. And 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 you, yes, you know, it, to a certain extent, when you're honing your the idea of what your vision might be, that's important. You still have to you still have to trust and 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 not fear um, the other great ideas that are coming your way and shut them down. So that's 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 true. I'm curious, I want to go backwards in time before you got the gig and when you met with Sony about the project, how, what was that like when you walk in? What is it like for you like to walk in and sort of pitch the studio on your idea for the movie? And do you get nervous when you're doing something like that? Well, in a way, I didn't actually have to do that on this because they reached out to me and it was through Tom. You know, Tom Hardy reached out to me because Tom and I have known each other for a long, long time and have wanted to work with each other and uh, have literally both as actors with each other and and also as, you know, with me directing. And there have been other opportunities in the past that have almost happened and haven't quite. But but it was Tom who reached out to me um, before before you know and just said look Andy we're, we're we've been talking and we're looking for someone to, to to take on this this second part of the journey of, of Venom and we we love the idea of doing it Do you we, you know can, can I throw your hat in the ring for, for the directorship and I so I so so I, I was yeah I was extremely flattered and then when I we talked and I talked to Kelly Marcel and obviously Tom and Kelly had been right sort of 
you know, creating the story together. And then Kelly had written the script and I read the, I read the script and it was, I was just so super excited about, about what, what was in there, which was this amazing um, departure from the first movie, whereby now you have a mature relationship of these, of these two central characters uh, that are that are so dysfunctional and hilarious and touching and moving and you know um, and and they 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 can't live with and can't live without each other. It was so rich and fertile. Plus, you get the introduction of you know one of the great supervillains of uh, of of the of the universe. You know, so so it it, it it's um, it was it was an, it was just a no brainer. And I and I I I just yeah. So I so I. It didn't have to do what you said, you know, which is to go in a pitch. I was I was very lucky in in, in the sense that I was reached out to, um, and I'm, I'm so thankful for that because I had a ball making it. Did you tell Tom that the only reason, the only way I will make this sequel is if I get to get rid of Woody's wig from the first film? <laughs> I think I think that was a group decision because there had been such you know and. and Tom, Tom Hardy's talked about this, you know, that after the first film came out and, it, you know, there were, the critics were quite tough on it, although the fans absolutely adored it and everybody went to see it. Um, you know, the, listening to the fans was really important and, you know, what was liked and what wasn't liked. And, and one of the things that came up, which we thought was going to be a distraction, was 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 the, the way that Cletus's hair, you know, looked in that first movie and that it would just, it wouldn't allow... We, it, that in a way, you wouldn't be able to get past it in, with what he had to do in this story, in terms of the seriousness, the darkness, the kind of the emotional truth of the character. There was something inherently kind of comic about that, which in the wrong way. So, so, yeah. so we all agreed, you know, that that it was it was time to, uh, to for him to have a haircut before this 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 movie started, and, and that it would logically in prison, you know, you would get a trim. Right. I, I was very happy the hair got changed. I, I'm also. <laughs> I think, I think Woody's great, but that hair needed to go, you know? Um, so uh, I always love learning about um, how things change during the developing of any project from when you guys started working on it to what people ended up seeing on screen or will see on the screen. Were there any really big changes along the way or was it pretty much what you, what Tom pitched you and Kelly mentioned to you back when you first got involved? I think the essence of it was was absolutely there, and it was a very it was always a very lean, muscular roller coaster ride that was only going to you know that the, the, the time of which was going to be an allotted ninety minutes. You know, we wanted it to move fast, to have pace, to have carnage kind of tear the thing up when he arrived on screen as early as we could make it happen without rushing all the character. Uh, you know the openings for the characters that we needed to establish and and, and necessarily spend time with unco uncovering and you know creating the relationship of Eddie and Venom, for instance. But but it was always that lean for sure. Um, but in terms of things that grew, I mean, there were lots of things that grew organically. The the, the relationship, with the, the, the you know, the fight scene in the apartment, you know, there was was a, was meant a one line in the script, you know, and it grew into this whole thing, you know, moments. That, that we felt, oh, look, we can really mine this and have fun, you know, really exemplify what it is exactly, specifically is going on between them at this moment in time. Um, you know, the, the escape from San Quentin grew and as we previsited it and changed and, you know, made it into a sort of, made, made carnage into a, this, you know, the moments of where it's almost like an aerial ballet as his tendrils of whipping him from side to side, all of those sorts of, you know, um, creative choices you know, took us in a particular direction. And then, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the, the battle royale, you know, the, the, the denouement, the big kind of toe-to-toe, -to -toe, which there is only, you know, we, we, we only have one big toe-to-toe, head-to-head with uh, Venom and Carnage, and purposefully we wanted that. But how we supported just, you know, the, yes, having two symbiotes fight is interesting, but how we underpinned that fight with the, with the reality of, of, of the relationship between Eddie and Cletus and how that would play out you know simultaneously that that again was something that really grew and changed and morphed during the uh, production uh the title is obviously venom let there be carnage at any point did you guys discuss having it being venom lethal protector or some other version of the title um we it's not really nothing to do with lethal protector at this point um we did think for a moment it might be called um love will tear us apart 
that was quite that was that was that was a kind of a, a going concern for a little while but 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 let there be carnage just seemed to you know it just seemed to do it it just there, there wasn't a lot of um fight in the in, in, in the uh, fighting over the other titles that we were thinking of because this was such a strong contender also you want to save lethal protector for maybe the next one it's just a possibility well yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. um so one of the things about venom and carnage both of them require a lot of vf obviously it's vfx so i'm curious going in is there any sort of like note from the studio saying hey you know we can afford 25 minutes of vfx so figure out how you want to use it does that come into play at all during the because obviously it has to be budgeted i'm just curious how that gets worked out yeah, no, look, I mean, you, you hit, when you go into production, the, the, everything everything is kind of like, how can we make this without spending so much money, you know, it, 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 in a lean way. And part of the discipline when you're pre vising part of the discipline when you're, you know, when you're creating or, or having ideas, um, you know, you can try, every, you can let your mind go wild and try out everything in the early stage of previous because it, it, it's, it's not rendered, nothing is rendered. You only start really spending money, of course, when you're rendering shots. Um, so you can ha- let the imagination run wild in, in, in pre- pre-production. Then, of course, when you, then you, when you get to production, you have to start nailing down exactly what you're going to shoot for real, what elements are going to be physical elements, what elements can be visual effects elements. And that's when it starts to be, you know, you know, no, that's going to, that probably is going to cost too much. If you do that, that's going to get very expensive. So, so yeah, but of course it's a sort of horse trading, it gets to a horse trading kind of moment where you, um, where you have to cut your cloth to a certain extent. Then, when you, when it starts to go into to 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 the the, the kind of the rendering phase and, the, and and then then you know then you're you're really having to spend the money making the shots look as best as possible and photo real and you know integrated and integrate the CG into into the cinematography and and that's something for instance on this movie in particular that was a big challenge because those designs the designs in the comics and of the characters of Carnage and Venom. They're not forgiving, you know. They're they're very bold, kind of cartoon-like almost, and it's hard to bring them into the real, real world. So, so you need an expert cinematographer. Ah, Bob Richardson. <laughs> uh, you know, he came in and worked with a brilliant visual effects uh, supervisor, Sheena Dougal, who worked on the first movie, and and that was one of the first things that I was really mostly um, concerned about not concerned about but wanted to get right was that i wanted to make it sh- shoot it in such a way that these things felt real physical you felt their mass you felt their interaction with the environment you felt the interaction with light you know and that that is that 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 was what we really really worked hard on in this movie um without getting into spoilers uh or dis- discussing it specifically but i am curious with the after the credit scene was that always planned for fr- from the beginning like, and did you, you know, could you sort of talk about, because it's a pretty significant scene, hypothetically. It was, it was not thought about from, from uh, the beginning. It was, it was, I mean, there was obviously, you know, um, you know, uh, talk, there were talks about what it was that we, where we wanted to leave the movie, but, but that certainly was, was not um, a, a foregone conclusion at the, at the beginning, for sure. Well, with something like that, is that something, obviously, that's very significant to the big Marvel, Sony, everything, I would imagine. So when did you actually, did you film that during the production or was that like an add-on? That was, that was all shot after the fact. Exactly. I want to ask so many more questions, but I'll leave it there and just, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, so um, I really enjoyed, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is the club scene. Um, I love it. It's just, it's just such a fun scene can you sort of talk about who came up with that idea and actually pulling it off on screen sure so it was always going to be a kind of because this was always going to be a a kind of halloween time movie we wanted to create a sort of day of the dead or carnival of the damned sort of festival a, a kind of almost like a big uh lgbtqia kind of feel festival um that venom suddenly finds himself in as an outsider and then realizes that these, you know, now he, as he says in the movie, you know, I'm out of the Eddie closet. He's he's here. He's arrived, and he, he actually feels not judged or looked at, or or you know. So, 
so that was that was always that was always a plan. Um, however, the, we had the great good fortune of Tom uh, Hardy knowing Little Sims, and she kind of uh, just after the or around the time of after the first movie. Um, she wrote a song called Venom, which was completely unrelated to the movie or the character. It was just something that she'd written about. And, um, and, and so Tom thought, wow, God, it'd be incredible if we could get her to sing it for this, you know, for this, for, 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 for us in, in the movie, which she, she did and came on board. And so that, that was a, that was a, a kind of an addition later on, but yeah. So, so, and then when we got there, it was like, wow, this is going to be, we, we wanted it to be big. And, you know, we had, and, and, and thank goodness it was before COVID hit. Um, we were able to shoot with 650 supporting artists um, over about three days, I believe it was, three days or three night shoots. Um, and it was amazing. It was amazing and, and quite, I mean, although we storyboarded it, and, uh, you know, certain parts of it storyboarded it, it still had, an, we wanted it to have an organic feel. And so, so really, it was just sort of picking little vignette moments, um, which we wanted to bring to life, and, and, and in the in the location that we were shooting, and then we had all these incredible puppets as well, and people on stilts and all of that. Um, so we sort of thread a story around a journey towards discovering Little Sim singing that song, and then and then his, and then Venom, you know, um, taking the stage. Uh, so, yeah. so it was, so it was a, it was a, it was a very complicated but but quite organic uh process yeah i love that scene i know i'm basically out of time but i have to ask you one other thing i'm a big fan of luther and i know you're ah. a part i know you're a part of luther and i really want to know um what can you tease about your role in the film and also when are you making it are you filming it now um i can tell you that i haven't started shooting yet but uh, the shooting will start relatively soon um, but of course, I can't really tell you too much about the character that I'm playing at this point. It would be a bit unfair. <laughs> and, um, so, so yeah. But it's I'm super excited about about joining the franchise because I, I I I really genuinely love Luther. I think it's uh, yeah. you know I think Idris Elba's character is just stunning and and uh, you know he, he, it, it's a it's it's just a very very interesting world and I'm. I'm really excited to work with Jamie Payne, the director who directed the last series, series five. So, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just so excited that uh, they're finally making the movie, you know, they've talked yeah, right. about, yeah, he's talked about it forever and I just never thought it was going to happen. And now it is, you know, Hey, listen, congrats on everything. Um, I would, I hope there's a huge hit for you and uh, thank you for giving me your time. Oh, thanks. It's always great to see you. Man. Cool. Thanks. Have a great day, man. Yeah. Cheers. 